six years, Chateau Tongariro is again open for business as a holiday hotel. And visitors from all over the North Island are heading back to their favourite winter resort. A well-timed fall of snow has made the road tricky for driving, but it's just what the skiers ordered. It's nice to be back again, and it's like old times being met at the door by the manager. to keep the road open, buses and cars can go now right up to the Salt Hut in midwinter. This saves a long tramp through the snow and leaves more energy for skiing. At Salt Hut, guides look after the learners, and after six years rest, there are a lot of novices. The sharp end goes first, lady. You have to learn to ski, but snowballing comes naturally. Uh-uh, looks like another cold front. The guides give a demonstration of what you can do when you've really learned to ski. With the shadows reopening, a ski toe is given a workout. 850 feet long, it takes the skiers to the top of the ski run behind Salt Hut. Holidaymakers, the reopening of the chateau is a welcome event, and if you haven't skied before, well, this is a good place to learn. Sir Bernard Freiburg meets the finalists for the Chatham Cup before play at the Basin Reserve Wellington. The teams playing off are Wellington Waterside in striped jerseys and Christchurch Technical Old Boys in the V jerseys. The Chatham Cup is the most sought after trophy in New Zealand Association football and the visitors this year are determined to make a big effort to take it out of Wellington. The play of Christchurch is rather more precise than the home teams, and often they come close enough to the goal to take a shot, but this time the goalie just saves it. The Christchurch goalie foils a Wellington shot and clears easily. But the visitors don't have it all their own way. They start a fast passing rush, but it's broken by their opponents who seize the advantage by pressing play into the goal area. Play swings down into Wellington territory and in a rapid movement, Christchurch Tech kicks a goal, putting them in the lead at half-time by one point to nil. Oh, and the Wharfies haven't started yet. the wind in their favour now and a good chance of turning the tables on Christchurch. Play is brisker but the visitors' defence proved just too good and they increased their advantage by kicking another goal, making the score at the end of the match Christchurch take two, Waterside nil. The Chatham Cup will leave Wellington for the first time in years and the visiting skipper happily accepts the trophy from the hand of the Governor-General. Just before midday on August the 25th, a tornado hit Frankton Junction and Hamilton East, causing three deaths and many injuries, and leaving a devastated track through shops and houses. A few minutes after the tornado passed, Frankton's shopping area was a scene of destruction, with windows smashed, verandas down, and several shops completely wrecked. Parked 
vehicles were damaged and nearby blocks of houses were leveled into a mass of wreckage. Many people were trapped in their homes and some of them had miraculous escapes from serious injury. Telegraph poles were bent and broken and wires were ripped away by wind and flying debris. Communications were restored as soon as possible and wreckage cleared away from damaged houses by repair gangs. People who had lost their homes searched the rubble for personal belongings and removed everything of value left intact. Emergency kitchens were set up to provide hot tea and food for the homeless and the rescue workers. A rapid survey of damage was made as soon as possible and temporary repairs started on roofs to keep out the torrential rains which followed soon after. But many homes were found to be completely wrecked. Several houses were lifted bodily in the air and this one was carried clear across the road from its former site in the foreground as the tornado swept up the hill towards the water tower. Besides the three deaths, six people were admitted to hospital and many others treated for minor injuries. A preliminary estimate of loss to property was put at a million pounds. 163 houses were damaged, 78 of them seriously and hundreds of people were left homeless in the wake of the tornado. Thank <laughs> you.